Hi, this is Ronald Johnson, your life coach, mentor coach. And what I do is I help people that are tired of who they are and where they are in life. And this is Gloria, your life coach. I help those who are feeling stuck, struggling with difficulties such as self-doubt, inner judgment, lack of confidence, life transitions, and taking steps forward. And welcome to Life's A Shuffle podcast. Now, you may wonder why it's called Life's A Shuffle. And the reason why we came up with this title was that life is really shuffling. And it doesn't matter where you come from, your background, what age you are, you're shuffling multiple things in life. And the best thing to know in life is everybody faces your struggles and everybody faces what you're going through. But there's hope in learning something about that. So when our guests share their journey, the hope is you learn something in that journey so yourself can navigate the struggles you face, the low self-esteem, the self-confidence. And that's why we call podcast Life's a Shuffle. And throughout this podcast, we share our personal overcoming stories, as well as our guests who shares their personal journey in overcoming their personal struggles. Life's a Shuffle podcast is here to connect like-minded individuals. And thank you for listening to Life's a Shuffle podcast. Hi, this is Gloria, Life Coach. Welcome to another episode of Life's a Shuffle. Hi, this is Ron Johnson, my folk coach, and welcome to another episode of Life's a Shuffle. Today is Freestyle Thursday. Mm-hmm. And... Um, what a difficult week for me has been. Um, so many emotions have come up this week that I had to get rid of. Um, you know, I, I talked about this before about being a Jehovah's Witness and, and and growing up this certain way as Jehovah's Witness and, you know, afraid, really just afraid of saying, hey, I have a different belief or, hey, I'm thinking a little bit different because the thought is that if you think different, you're considered apostate. And if you think different, you're going against religion and being grown up Jehovah's Witness um, my dad died as Joe's witness. My mom's Joe's witness. Um, you're afraid. And I'm not afraid anymore this week. Uh, this week I said to myself, I'm not going to adhere to any organized religion. Okay. I'm going to develop a spiritual, uh, relationship with, with God and with Jesus Christ. And that's what I'm going to do going forward. And immediately then I felt this overwhelming, a sense of calm. And I had it too. And, you know, I was listening to Oprah Winfrey's um, YouTube video this morning about spirituality. And because um, that's what I'm leaning towards. And, you know, because it's really huge in my life at this point. And she's talking about, you know, her childhood and growing up and, and different things. And uh, one thing hit me like a ton of bricks. I remember that my mom telling me that, um, that my dad didn't want a second child. He didn't want me. But my mom at the time went to the brothers, brothers being like in the church, the uh, pastor, priest, whatever they call it. They finally convinced him. He said, yes. So I wasn't supposed to be here. But I am. And right now, I know that I'm special. Because I wasn't supposed to be here. I, I wasn't supposed to be born. I was only supposed to have just one kid. My parents were supposed to have one kid, which was my sister, and that was it. And I I can't believe it that, you know, when you realize different things in your life, that you are special and you out there listening to podcasts, you're special. You may be the fifth child, the fourth child, the 10th child, or the only child, but you're special. You're given breath, you're given life, you're given opportunity to be here. How many kids out there, you know, they die in the womb or the sperm didn't make it to the egg, right? But you did. And that's what makes you special. Second thing being is I'm also hiring another coach. You know, those, you know, we're coaches, also have coaches because, hey, man, there's great things to learn and work on, especially working yourself. That's the best thing because if you work yourself, that means I have more energy and more to give. I don't work on myself, then I have nothing to give to you guys or to my clients. And I started doing this thing called NLP, Neuro Linguistic Programming. And the best way to describe that is today is 2021. And obviously, time has passed. But what if you had a computer that was Windows 95? I mean, could it even have Wi-Fi? Would be slow, would be fast? What would happen to it? 
you know, everything we go through in life is either conscious or unconscious beliefs. And what that programming, until you upload new programming, you're still op operating off of Windows 95. So I started realizing that, you know, watching my parents have failed relationships, watching my mom, you know, fall in love, the guy didn't work out. A lot of things we experience in our life has to do with what we experience. It's like NLP from zero to seven. That becomes our unconscious belief. So if you wonder why relationships with people are failing, if you wonder why your career is not happening, it's because there's programming that's there. So my programming for much of my life being Joe's witness was, you know, I'm different. So when you're different and you go to school, they find Joe's witness, you get picked on. You get looked at different. So you become more internalized. Oh, well, I'm not accepted. And you, you don't understand how to deal with that because school doesn't teach you how to do it. Well, just play fair with others. They don't like you. That's fine. You know, words with sticks and stones and they break my bones, but words mean it won't hurt me or whatever they used to say back in the days. Um, here came a situation where I spent my whole life up until now fighting, wanting to be accepted. And that got me into to being financially destitute, filed for bankruptcy, poor relationships, because I did all these things to create a persona that if I create this persona being, you know, I have the brand new pair of true religion jeans, or I have the hundred dollar shirt, or I drive a nice car, or I can take a girl on a fancy dinner. I would have more, I wouldn't been so broke. And I was just fighting to be wanted by creating these illusions of who I thought I was. And this is where, you know, all of us out there, what are your unconscious beliefs? What 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 are you doing in your life that seems to be always be failing? Why why is it always failing? You can't sit here and blame it on God. You can't sit here and blame it on somebody else. You can't blame it on anything but yourself. And that's why it's important when I look at any relationship out there, including first myself, relationship with myself is more important. Is are you having a coach? You know, what are you doing? I mean, I, I just my, I'm overwhelmed with so much joy and at the same time, I can't believe it, what's happening to me and what I'm realizing, um, you know, getting rid of the religion thing, spirituality, knowing that I am the cause and effect of my own life, that if I didn't hold these beliefs of not being accepted, um, I wouldn't have been through so much of my life having kids at a young age. Because the idea of having kids at a young age is I found my baby's mama and I'm like, okay, well, this old woman that wants me, this must be what God intended me to have. See, here it is not being accepted because I found someone that likes me. But see, when we when we have these beliefs unconsciously in our, unconsciously in our mind, we tend to manifest and track those. So if you have it in your conscious mind, oh, man, I can make more money. Okay, why is it always there? Or why are relationships always failing? Or, or why can I achieve happiness? Because we always think happiness is out, but it's actually inside. I don't know what to say, Gloria. You can take it over now. <laughs> no, I was, um, I, I told you, I mentioned to you that I am taking those, um, doing the inner engineering as well. And it, it is there that did mention that about there's anything that's happening in your life or whatever's happening. There's nobody, it, if it's bad, there's really no one to blame. You can't blame anybody. You know, if let's say um, you're going on a date, okay, let's use that example. You're going on a date. This person, let's say, was late or didn't show up. You can't blame that person. Who knows if that person has a certain reason, right? But there's really only one person to blame on any everything. And just you have to look it within you because the problem may not be outside. The problem may not be other people. The problem may be within you because, you know, you have you could have a certain block, or a certain situation, why you've been feeling that way. And the issue is really just, it's within you. And that's why you got to sometimes have to dig in there and you search. You know what? Everything we go through in our life is Newton's third law. Everything has equal and opposite reaction. And those are basically what we manifest inside us, create an equal and opposite reaction. So if we hold in mind certain thoughts, it's like doing going to engine in enter, you know, 
inner engineering because you want to unbox those thoughts. You want to unbox your better self. You want to unbox these different things because that's the only other way to get to the next level. And whatever the level is, maybe just, I'm just using an example, maybe just be in a better place in life, happiness with yourself. I mean, don't you want to be happy? Yeah. Don't we all? Well, if we want to be happy, it boils down to, do we think happiness is outside or inside? It's inside. You got to really, really know yourself, know what you want. You know, who are you? How do you know you exist? You know, and these are the things that sometimes you have to ask yourself, like the things you consider what you call, quote unquote, myself right now. Who am I right now? You know, you, you talk about mind, right? So your mind is, your mind is capable of speaking, gosh, you know, so many voices if you allow it. And what do you mean by that? If you allow it, so you're in control of it, right? You're in control of your mind and your emotions. So what's happening in your mind, um, what I, this is what I've learned in, in engineering is what's happening in your mind is your dream. And I, I love that. I, it, that's stuck in my head is what hap, what's happening in your mind is your dream because the problem in life is not about life happening the way you want it. So if right now your, let's say your thought and emotion just takes instructions from you and that's what you want it to do and behave the way you want it to behave, would you live joyfully or happily? I guess until you become aware, you don't know. Right. So instead of going all over the places in your head, the only, the only end, um, and only reason where you can be, let's say, stressed, miserable, angry, or whatever, is because your mind is not taking instructions from you. You're not, you know, paying attention to it. So where does that instruction come from? Okay. So where is the instructions coming from? Is the it's that's why sometimes when you okay when you don't pay attention to the basic nature of the mind you're trying to do something else, right? So something else meaning it could be something that you're not you you didn't you don't want to do but you feel like you should do because it's not whatever it is is not happening to you. Where is that instructions coming from is not there. It's coming from you. You have to have control of that. Okay, so the instructions are coming from me. What's controlling the instructions? What you see outside. What you believe or you think you believe. Is that conscious or unconscious belief? Unconscious. So instructions come unconsciously from you and they Conscious tend to manifest. Mm -hmm. Yeah, go ahead. Tend to manifest what you see in the world. Right. Is that what you're saying? Mm-hmm. Okay, because so if then you're conscious, you're aware of it, right? And then you can take control of that and you can um like what he said on this one, it's just it's just a dream. It, it could just be an illusion that you're thinking or that you're seeing in your mind, but it really isn't what's happening for you. You're making it happen for yourself. So everything in our life happens through a conscious or unconscious being. Is that what you're saying? Mm -hmm. So the dream is coming from what place? It's what you have in mind that you want to think. So what we hold in mind tend to manifest. Is that what he's saying? Yes. So give us an example of what we hold in mind. Like give us an example of what you might so, hold in mind. Tell a story about yourself. That's what I'm thinking right now. Um, 
So if I say, um, so if I, if there's something that I want in life that is not happening with me or that's not happening for me right now, um, <laughs> I can't think. If I don't want okay. it to, it's basically, I'll, I'll if, yeah, you can go. We'll, we'll, we'll work on this. You go first. Yeah, go come back around. <laughs> so I'll give you a personal example. You know, when I had failures upon failures in relationships, and I always lean upon that because I can talk about that. And when I had failures upon failures of not having enough money, I thought, one, relationships were failed because God intended them to be failures. One. Second being financial failures because I'm not lucky. Two. So uh, bad relationships come from God. Financial failures because I'm not lucky. Someone else is lucky. So I'm not born lucky. Okay. And we all can be familiar with those terms. What tend to happen is that both those scenarios went intertwined. So failure relationships and, and many failures were together. The reason why they tend to show up is because neurologically i had other program running it's like uh you have a software or you have a server running on its own right you have a server up top that sees everything's happening in front of you but you have a server in the background it's like a backup it's like a backup server so you have two servers so the backup server that in my mind was my experiences around me right so we're not born into relationships right we're not born to how to love we're not born we're born with a conscious feeling of love. So if a baby's hold all the time, it's love. He's better off. So don't get me wrong. There's a vibrational love there. But love does change, right? Love languages you change. So when I look back at my parents, they had disastrous relationships. Disastrous. So my dream in my life was by the time I'm 25, I should be married, two kids, and make a lot of money. That was a dream. Right, because you have your mind set on that. And that's mm -hmm. what you think that this is what I'm going to do. This is what I'm going to make happen. And this will happen. So now tell me if that doesn't happen, what happens then? How do you feel? What happens then you feel like a loser. Right. But you're only feeling that way because you didn't. So the instruction was you told yourself. Mm -hmm. this is my dream this is my goal and this is what's going to happen for me mm -hmm. but because life didn't happen the way you wanted it because you had that instructions then you feel miserable you're mad you're angry right mm -hmm. but if you didn't have that and if you just you know um if you didn't have that and you just let it kind of just behave it the way you want it to behave, almost just saying like kind of going with the flow, mm -hmm. how would you, how would you feel? How would you live life? And, and that's, that's the paradox. The paradox is that we should live a life in the future. The paradox is, should we have a, a future goal? The future goal was be 25 married and have kids. That's the paradox. But along the way, we don't know, right? So if I'm 19 have this vision at 25, we don't know what's going to happen. Can we plan towards that? Can we fantasize about it? Yes. But the paradox is we don't know what's going to happen five or six years from now. And if we work towards what we think would provide us a happy, so the point of being 25 married, it would remind me, what I didn't have. So the dream becomes what I didn't have because I saw how bad it was having poor relations with my parents, them individually separate because they divorced, that now if I had to, I'd be happy. So I'm seeking these dreams that provide me a level of happiness and fulfillment. But the dream itself only existed in a conscious mind did not exist nowhere else. But unconsciously, I was getting myself into poor relationships because I wasn't being accepted. I was getting myself into situations because I wanted to, to, to provide this illusion of myself. That's why that dream I had never came because 
I had all these unconscious ways of looking at things. So dream never existed. It couldn't exist. Or it could also be that if you have something that you want to accomplish in life, okay, so we we're playing with our minds now. If there's something that you want to accomplish in life, you give yourself that instruction because, again, I go back to the instruction because I keep seeing who's in control of your mind and emotions is you. So you tell yourself, I'm going to accomplish this. I Let's say, um, I don't know, I'm going to use a pair of shoes that, let's say, I've always wanted, right? I really want those shoes. How am I going to get those shoes? I need to, to save money for it, whatever. If that doesn't happen for me, of course, I'm going to. I'll be kind of irritated. I'll be down a little bit. Well, why couldn't I just afford the shoes? I really wanted it. But did I work on it? Did I work for that? No, had no, I said, my, what was that? You just wanted it. Yeah, I just wanted it. But I was telling myself I really wanted it. And then it wasn't happening for me. It wasn't happening for me because I didn't do anything about it. At the same time, it's like I'm waiting for it. I'm waiting for it to just to happen. You know what I mean? Like I, I'm I'm waiting for something to happen and get that. How is how am I gonna be, wait for it unless I do something about it? So how about work? Work and So the idea money. is you didn't put the effort in to accomplish that dream. You just, just wanted it. Right. But I just keep telling myself, you know, I'm gonna get that. I know I will. But some that in, in, in the interim from not having to having it was the missing component. Is that what you're trying to say? Mm -hmm. And what happened in that period is that you didn't work towards it? I didn't do anything about it. There's just another one is there's just no action. So if I want something, I have to take immediate action? Not immediate, but you can work on something to get that. Because again, you're you're the one controlling your mind. You're the one telling yourself, I want that and, I'm going to, and I will get it. How are you going to make it happen? You want to pursue a certain dream, okay? How are you going to make that happen for you? How are you going to pursue it? You have to take steps. You have to have a purpose in your steps, whatever the steps are. If that dream doesn't happen for you, Would you think that life is over for you? Would you be frustrated, be stressed about it? Would you feel miserable because it didn't happen for you? I would say at this point, if you asked me two years ago, a couple of years ago, I'd be, oh, I'd be devastated. This is what I work hard for. But ask me now, I would say I wouldn't be devastated because then I realize what steps did I put into get close to that dream. And at the same time, what was I really meant to have that? Like, like some things don't happen because you're not ready for it. Right. So there's like, that. And then again, you know, there's all these voices that speaks to your mind. That's, I can't do this. I can't reach that. I can't afford that. Then that tends to stop you from achieving your dream because you haven't thought about having it. Mm -hmm. You haven't really thought about how you thought about. Ah, I want to have, but I I, I kind of don't. I want to have, but it's it's too hard. I want to have it, but it's gonna cost too much. I want to have it because it makes you feel happy. It's like it's like you you subconsciously tr trick yourself into thinking yourself out of it if you're not careful. If you're not careful that I have this dream, but if you think about all the things you can't. All the obstacles in your way, it's like talking yourself out of the dream. Right. And that's why you have to pay attention to your mind. Otherwise, you'd be doing something different that you probably didn't want to do, but you just did it. Hmm. That's just a concept there. What? It's like we all are both going through this. Uh, uh, it's a new conscious level. It's a new way of, of living life. It's a new way of being in life. Like when I was reading Inkartelli's book, uh, New Earth, 
that what you said kind of hit me really hard this morning that life is a purpose, but the purpose is now. If you want to get somewhere, let's say your dream, you have to live intentionally now in the purpose you're doing, not so fixated on just the future. And that's like, wow, the eye opener that we've been taught so much of our life to live in the future, live in the future, live in the future, live. And you're going to go to college, you're going to get married, you're going to have kids, you know, you're going to do this, you can do that, live in the future. But for most people that doesn't, the, the dream they've been giving or the thought they've been having didn't happen. Because they didn't do much work to get there. Mm-mm. And when it happened and when it's supposed to come, they weren't ready for it. Right. Man, this is some great stuff. I'm oh, telling you, this is so. Uh, and, and, you know, also at the same time is that you, you put a certain goal in your life, right? You know, a future, whatever it is that you, you have something set at this age, I'm going to get married. I'm going to go to this college. I'm doing this. I'm doing that. So question on that is, this is just also, I, I think I, this is how a lot of people are. You get there, then what? You want to be something else. You get there and then what? You want to do something more. It's it's like we always want to keep doing something more. And why is that? Why, why are we looking for more? We just... Okay, so we just want to keep looking for more. We want more and we want more in life. But why do you... Why do you set boundaries to where I'm going to college and I'm going to go to this college and then I'm going to find a job and then I'll have a good job after I go to that college. So it's like when you get there, you're not, if you're happy, but yet you want more. So you kind of set a certain boundaries. But I think what I've realized too is we don't like boundaries. You feel like you're done when you get there, you thought you'd be done. And that's it for you, but you want to, you keep seeking for more. So why not, let's say, expand the boundaries, right? And how about just like, just, we're constantly looking for something more, but why not just make it, just, just limitlessly seek for something, not, not just, you know, be, have a certain set of mind or a certain set of future. You know why we have those certain set of future? Because we always think the happiness is outside. So we always think, okay, if I graduate college, I'll be happy. Then if I get a better job, I'll be more happy. Then if I get get a better job and buy things I want, that'll make me happy. We always set these next, I guess, next step up from what we're doing in order to really achieve some form of happiness. But when it doesn't go as planned, we think life has failed us and we think life is not going to happen. Right. But that's because you've set that boundary, you know? So if you want to expand, expand limitlessly. So don't set boundaries. Right. Because, you know, when you don't and you've achieved that, you've, you've, you've become successful enough then you know that sometimes it may not be about money anymore if you want more money. You know, it's just all about just expanding and just following whatever path you feel in your heart. And you just keep following that. And if you're happy, great. Then you know it's not going to be about, I need to make someone happy. So I'm going to college and finish and finish college. Oh, I need more money. So I'm going to keep doing this and working harder because I can make, you know, this much money and I can be set. Hmm. So we really got to, we really got to realize what our thought process is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just, you know, how much more do you really believe will settle you for good? No, because it's next high. I buy a new car. I want a better car. I have a job. (laughs) I want more money. Yeah. How are you going to achieve that? 
so the best way to combat that is a huge dose of gratitude daily. Because if you're constantly worried about some future time, you forget what you have now. So when that time comes to have that or wish that or doesn't happen, what do you have to fall back on? You can practice any gratitude. You're not thankful for what now is. You just so focus on what is. Well, I hopefully this happens in the future, but you didn't set forth the right intention. Then you had a, a block, like you think that's it, when it's limitless. Because, mm-hmm. you know, you get someone that says, I want to lose 20 pounds. So what's your goal weight? I want to get down to 125 pounds. Okay, then what next? Well, I better maintain it. Okay, then what next? Well, I, I feel better because I'm being maintained. You know, the really happiness in a journey like that is the downward struggle to get there. What you're learning in the process, what you're gaining. Not that if I get there, I'm satisfied. Because what if you don't get there? What next? What if you get down to 129 pounds and you feel awesome? So did 125 pounds mean anything? So what we give power to, what the meaning are we giving that power or that dream? You know, and what I could add to that is that when we're not aware, we get into this deep need or desire. We do. Because we think some of the, something out there in the universe or the world is going to provide us the level of happiness that we need. So Sally has what I want. So if I had what Sally has, I'd be happy. That's what that's what the the the, the thing is. Is that we always have so much coming at us with different things that we think will provide a level of happiness, limiting ourselves and our abilities beyond that. Right. So I would say this has been a tough week. Um, I'm so happy I don't have a headache now. I've had a headache the last two days. <laughs> Congratulations. Um, I, I'm really now, I have reached a different state of mind. And relinquishing anything that has power for me, money, clothes, certain type of wealth, electronics, even social media, those damn likes. I mean, I'm telling you, going to my smart my smartwatch all the time, I'm sick of those notifications. Those are yeah, obviously have power over me. Turn I might turn that sucker off soon. Mm-hmm. Turn, turn it off. off the notification. Yeah. Um, so I want to say know, thanks. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, I just wanted to add something that just came to mind when um, in the beginning of this podcast, when you said something about um, that you were not, um, that your dad only wanted one child, right? Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Um, that you maybe were not meant to be here. I just wanted to add that, you know, actually I was the same, but I like to joke around about it, that I I was just an accident. So maybe you were an accident too. <laughs> I just like to joke about that stuff because I really wasn't meant to be here in this world. In fact, actually, um, I think my mom had an emergency C-section and I they weren't sure if I was even going to survive or not. And um, being born in February, also, um, I've also heard that we're special. So, you know, you're special. That makes me special, too, for being, you know, being, (laughs) as they say, born in February, you're special. And then I probably wasn't meant to be in this world. But now I've realized that, you know, maybe you and I are meant to be here for a reason. I 100% agree to that. Um everybody's special but what makes you special is the adversity you face and the way you live your life and the way you help others live their life and the service you give and the happiness you feel and the gratitude that you feel those are really the ideas to life not you know if i get a millionaire I mean, the person that dies broke or the type, person that's a millionaire, they're still the same. They're still the same. Nothing's different. Just have, one has had more money. But when you die, you're the same. 
so I hope you guys out to learn something from this because um, idea is to share our values, principles, share, share our values too and, and, and our principles. And, and the idea is, is hopefully you can now unlock your values and principles and know what they are um, and, and get a better, better take on life and the life you have right now and what you want to live. So thank you for listening to another Life's a Shuffle podcast. This is Ronald Johnson, Mindful Coach. And if you guys want to comment, be a special guest, you can find us on under Life's a Shuffle on Facebook or send us an email to lifesashuffle at gmail.com. Thanks for listening. Yes, thank you. And this is Gloria Life Coach. And again, thank you for listening to another episode of Life's a Shuffle.